Hello, my name's Jonathan. I work for Cats Protection, a charity that helps cats and kittens in lots of different ways. One of those ways is to find them new homes when they don't have one of their own. Do you like my den? I made this after watching last week's video. Kelly had some fantastic ideas about giving our cats somewhere to sleep and hide, and I just had to try it for myself. If you don't have a cat of your own, then you can make a den for yourself too. How do you think it might feel inside a den? Cozy, warm, playful? Hiding is a natural behaviour for cats, and they love to hide even when they aren't feeling scared. And that's why I wanted to show you this today. In this video, we're going to be learning about the second welfare need of cats, understanding behaviour. We'll be doing a scavenger hunt, watching a mini documentary, and making a toy for cats to play with. Even in the depths of winter, the territorial domestic cat observes his kingdom below to ensure that no neighbouring felines are trespassing on his lands. Reaching high places is a crucial coping mechanism as it increases a cat's territory upwards and aids a feeling of security. Hiding is equally important particularly when the humans bring in an alien beast to suck at the floor. The cat's survival instincts kick in and he retreats to fight another day. Okay, before we begin, have you seen our Moggy modules? These are our home learning packs which can be downloaded for free from our education website. They contain lots of fun activities to help you learn more about cats and their needs. Our website is filled with lots of other exciting content too, like games, quizzes and crafts. Why not check it out when this video is finished? Don't forget to share your activities with us via Facebook, Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag TheMoggyModules. Right. Time for a scavenger hunt. If you played along last time, you'll know what to do, but I'll repeat the rules for those of you who missed out. Today, we're going to be hunting for cat activities, things cats can play with. We'll reveal a list of items and you have to find as many as you can in and around your home. You can bring them back with you, take a photo, or maybe write a list to remind yourself of what you found. I want you to look for some string, a soft toy, a shoelace or maybe a piece of ribbon, a toy ball or a ping pong ball, and some feathers. Okay, ready? Pause the video now and get hunting. Good luck. Okay, so you're back. How did you get on? Let's look a little bit closer at some of the items I asked you to find to see why they're important to cats. Now playing is really important to cats and not just when cats are kittens but also when they're adults as well. Play is a really great way of helping cats to stimulate their body and their mind. They really love to chase things, particularly things that move in a really unpredictable and quick way. One way of doing that is by playing with your cat with a ball. A bouncy ball will bounce all over the place and the cat will have great fun trying to catch it. Or you could use something simple like a piece of string or a ribbon or a shoelace. And you can drag this across the floor in all kinds of exciting ways and your cat will have great fun pouncing and trying to catch it. Why do you think they love that kind of movement? Maybe it reminds them of a tiny little rodent that they might like to chase and hunt. <laughs> One of the best toys for cats is the fishing rod toy. 
These come in all kinds of shapes, sizes and colours. The really great ones have feathers on the end like this, and the feathers add to the really exciting movement that the cat loves to chase. We'll be learning how to make one of these later on in the video. But learning about cat behaviour isn't just about play. There's a few other things we need to know about too. Let me show you a picture. Do you know what this is? That's right, this is a cat's litter tray. We all need to go to the toilet somewhere, don't we? And this is where a cat might go. A lot of cats go to the toilet outside, but there are some cats that can't. Maybe they live indoors, or maybe they're too young, or they're very old. Now, I wouldn't want to go out to the toilet if it was raining or if it was cold outside, and I'd very much appreciate another option inside the home. So do cats too. The litter tray should be kept somewhere nice and quiet and should be kept very clean. No one likes a dirty toilet. The other thing we have is a scratching post. <laughs> These come in all sorts of sizes too, from very small like the one I have here to massive towers and activity centres that take up whole rooms. <laughs> the best thing about these is they give cats somewhere to scratch. Scratching is really important for cats for two reasons. Reason one is to keep their claws in really good condition. But reason two is to leave behind a special scent that tells other cats that they live here and this is their territory. It's really important we don't stop cats from scratching because it's a natural behaviour that's really important for them. But some cats might accidentally scratch the sofa or the carpet and this might make some of us a little bit upset. But making sure that they have a good, sturdy, strong scratching post is one big step towards solving this problem. And you can find out more about that on our website too. Next. To find out more about cats and hunting, let's watch a short documentary. In the vast wilderness of the spare bedroom, we find the domestic cat. Despite interacting with humans for thousands of years, Cats have curiously retained many of their natural instincts, including the need to hunt. Thanks to the latest and most advanced technology, human companions can now encourage hunting behaviour in the home to keep cats mentally stimulated and help prevent behavioural issues. In this remarkable footage, we see that cats are expert hunters. Showing patience and stealth, cats can jump many times their own height and reach speeds of up to 30 miles per hour to catch their prey off guard and strike. Cats truly are a majestic and fantastic species. Ah, you're back. Did you enjoy that video, learning all about cat hunting behaviours? <laughs> Well, now we're going to do a craft, and this craft is a fishing rod toy. It's something cats absolutely love to play with. You're going to need a few things. First of all is a stick. This is a nice bamboo cane that came from my garden. But remember, ask your parents' permission first before taking anything from the garden. Now that's our fishing rod. We also need some line. So here I have a piece of string. And this string, or you could use a piece of ribbon or even an old shoelace, is great for swishing around for cats to chase. We also need some feathers. As we said before, cats love feathers, and these are some very nice ones I found in my garden. Again, you might be able to find some of these if you go out on a walk, or uh, you could also buy feathers from some craft shops as well. They might come in all kinds of different fun colours. 
Lastly, we're going to need some sellotape just to help us tie it all together. So, to start, we'll need to take our stick and attach our string. The easiest way to do this is to make a loop in your string and make a small knot, just like that. And then you can thread your stick through the end and just pull it nice and tight. So there we have our stick with our string. You might want to, just for extra added security, tie another loop around there just to make sure it's nice and tight on the stick. There we go. So, this is going to take quite a lot of punishment from your cat. They're going to want to pull on it and tug, and I can see that string slipping off the end very easily and very quickly. So, this is where the tape comes in. And we now need a nice length of tape, which we're just going to stick over the end and wrap around there. Make sure you keep, I might just put another one on there, make sure you keep the actual string, the long bit of string, nice and free. We want that to just hang off the end there, so there we go. So we've got our stick with a string, give it a good tug, I think that will withhold a fair bit of play. Excellent. So now that leaves us with, actually, a pretty good toy. Look at that. We can wiggle that across the floor and the cat will probably have a fair bit of fun just with this. But we're going to jazz it up a little bit and we're going to add our feathers onto the end. To do that, we'll make a loop just like before. And we'll gather up our feathers. You might want to uh, arrange them nicely and make sure that they sticks are nice and easy to get to there. Pop that over the end of your feathers and once again pull that nice and tight and just like before I'm going to put a, another loop in there as well just tie that a second time because our feathers are going to have the same problem as the stick they might just come loose if we don't tie them nice and secure so, that calls for another piece of tape. So, I'm just going to wrap that all around there. It's handy to try and keep it just on the stalks of those feathers and we don't destroy the nice feathery parts of them. There we go. So, there we have it. It's very simple. We have one fishing rod toy. And we have ourselves, look at that, a little fun toy that we can just twitch along the floor. And that will drive our cats wild. They will just love to grab and pull that around. <laughs> Before you go, here's another fun little variation that we could use. The stick that we got before has a nice hole in the end and I thought this would be a really good idea to try out a different type of fishing rod toy. So we can take our feathers that we had before and we can actually transform this stick very quickly into another very fun and exciting toy for cats. So all we have to do is pop our feathers in the end. These might be a bit too many, you might only want one or two. But straight away, we then have ourselves a feather stick. This isn't quite as exciting as the other one because we can't move it in quite the same way. But we still have those amazing feathers on the end and your cat would still love to chase that across the floor. So you can see how easily with only a few things we've been able to make a toy for cats. So you don't have to spend a lot of money in the shops to do this. And remember that it's really important to play with cats, whether they're very young or whether they're an adult cat. 
And these sorts of toys are really safe for us to use because we can have our hands at one end and their teeth and claws can play nice and safely at the other end. So give this a go at home. Use your imagination and see what you can create for your cat. If you don't have a cat, maybe you could make a toy for a cat that is in cat's protection care or that a friend or relative owns. Share your inventions with us as well. Use the hashtag the Moggy Modules and send us your pictures of your toys and we would love to see what you come up with. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today, but thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to learn more about cat behaviour, why not check out our Moggy Modules? They're free to download from our education website and there's one for each of the five welfare needs of cats. If you've enjoyed the video today, please tell us in the comments and let us know if you've learned anything. We love hearing what you have to say. Join us next week where we'll be looking at the third welfare need, the right diet. Keep an eye on our Facebook page, Twitter and YouTube channel to be the first to know when it's ready to watch. I've been Jonathan, thank you so much for joining me here today, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.